Exercise 5. In this exercise, we take a look at something different inside Creo 4.0. We're actually going to work with an assembly, and this is going to be utilizing what's called the bottom-up method. The bottom-up method of assembly modeling is essentially taking parts that are pre-existing from a library, you might say, nuts, bolts, whatever, and you just assemble them, and you assign constraints to the surfaces or relationships. Um, that will enable it to assemble what you see on the screen in front of us. Also, we'll take a look at dynamic assembly motion, which is one of the uh, effects that are given when you apply these mates in a certain order. So I think you'll find it a very interesting exercise. So let's begin. First of all, make sure you download the files. Those of you who um, go to the, you could go to the vertani1.com and part files, You'll see I have the Creo files here, and these are, note they are only for educational licenses. So if you try and download this to a commercial license, you will have some problems. It will not let you. Um, I put on some Exercise 5 IGES parts, and those you could actually import and utilize those on a commercial license. Uh, you'll just have to import them and save them. Uh, save them all in the same folder would probably be preferable and then you could go ahead and assemble this so my apologies I don't have the uh, the regular commercial license here this is for educational purposes only okay so let's begin start off with a new assembly file so here you're gonna click on assembly and go ahead and give it a name of E5 and hit OK. Now we're going to go up here. This is going to be the button we're going to use quite often for bottom-up assembly modeling. Uh, bottom-up, as I said, refers to taking parts that are already constructed for you. Top-down or skeleton assemblies are a more advanced topic uh, where you're actually building the parts inside the assembly and that is uh, we start looking at that very minimal at uh, by exercise 9, I believe. So um, skip ahead if you're interested in that. But here I'm going to go to Assemble. And I already have my files ready. I downloaded them. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the very first part is the sheet metal bracket. Go ahead and hit Open. Now we'll bring it in, and these little arrows and rings allow you to rotate it or reposition it and that's very useful when you are trying to get it all assembled but right now um, this belongs actually just on the origin so if you hit the little arrow to the right of automatic use the default that matches the parts origin with the assembly origin and that's very useful for top-down assembly modeling you might find that in uh, files that you get from other customers and such that they might all be locked into the or centralized origin but not necessarily all of them um, so I'm gonna just apply it on that one now you can use the planes to mate but I'm gonna disable those planes and axes you do have the ability to select those and align them together but what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and bring in another part so again we go to assemble and this first part I'd like to bring in is actually the yoke male. The yoke male. Select that. And now here's where we could actually use these little arrows. Find the green arrowhead, grip it with your mouse button, and drag it up. You can see you could relocate it. You could also go ahead and drag the red arrow and things like that. But really what we want to do is in this case, we're going to go ahead and align it to that pink hole that you see right over here. So select this surface of the boss that's sticking out of the yolk mail and then go ahead and select that pink surface of the hole on the sheet metal bracket. Now if your bracket or your parts in this exercise do not have the same colors that I have on mine uh, don't worry just select the faces that I'm selecting because I've tr I'm trying to update these parts and we'll see if I could upload them for you to use but Currently, the files that I used in 3.0 and 2.0 only are pretty much just monochromatic. Go ahead and select that face. All right, now we're going to go ahead and apply another mate. This top face, if you could see this, remember if you can't see it, you could always drag it up and then rotate this and select this underside yellow face of the bracket. 
and now it's coincident. Now, if you don't get coincident, by the way, you always have the ability here to select it manually. Okay, because uh, it will give you a distance option, and distances are very important and very useful. For example, tolerances and things like that. So be aware, coincident is not always what you're going to get in reality. There's coincident face-to-face -face contact, but when we look at tolerance stack analysis and other things like that, um, you you definitely want to tolerances in many of these parts in real in reality. Hit the green check mark to apply. Now, zoom in and out, or hit the little windshield wiper to repaint the screen if you have any fragments left. And now, I want to show you this. Go to Drag Component. And typically, you should be able to drag the component. However, this one I forgot to enable an option. So if I click on it, unfortunately, I cannot drag it. So over here on the right, I'm just going to hit Close. This brings us to an interesting tool on the left. If you want to see these features, uh, hit the little settings button up here. It looks like a hammer and screwdriver. Go to the tree filter and turn on display features. Not everyone cares to have that on, but I like to have it on. And now you can see the full feature tree with the feature trees that came over from the individual parts as well. Um, and you, if you hit a little arrow, you'll see that these are, these are actually imported models. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to go back to this yoke mail and edit that. So right click and find the edit definition button. This will bring us back to those coincident states. Now bring up the placement tab here and turn off allow assumptions. Unfortunately when you don't turn them off the first time the Creo keeps adding them hereafter and hopefully sometimes I've seen where it seemed as though it didn't but uh, we might be stuck having to disable that every time now but if you disable it the very first time when you first assemble the model usually it remembers that setting and now once that's applied hit the green check mark and now we could go back to that drag component and there we should be able to click on this part and rotate it so remember the allow assumptions button is important Okay, and as what we've done there too, we've removed the degrees of freedom of this model. Notice that it can no longer travel vertically. It could only rotate its place because we added that coincident and a concentric. Okay, let's move on to the next part. Go to assemble, and the next part we're looking for is called the spider hinge. Hit open, and again, this is one you could get close in proximity to the geometry desired and now we're gonna go uh, don't hit the apply yet we first want to lock these holes into these holes here so see that blue hole right there go ahead and select that surface of the blue hole and now select this hole over here notice it's in alignment versus this is a perpendicular hole you don't want that one but hit this one right here okay now we could go ahead and select this face right here and be very cautious as to what face you align it to, depending upon the proximity or location of this model, you might end up getting it locked in on this side by accident. So make sure you select this face. Notice I rotated with the middle mouse button to get it centered. If you have difficulty with that, my suggestion is not don't necessarily try and bite off more than you could chew by editing what, where I just showed you how to edit these mates. You might actually want to just delete the part out of the assembly and try it over again for new users. Once you become more uh, adept to this software, you could go and modify things very easily. But go ahead and hit the green check mark to apply. Oh, before we do that, let's make sure allow assumptions and see, as I said before, unfortunately now it's stuck on on a regular basis. So we're going to have to turn off allow assumptions there. Okay, let's see what we've done now. If we go to drag component, if we click on this part, and move our pointer left, right, up, and down. You can see it now pivots and rotates. Okay, hit close up here or middle click. Now we're going to go ahead and bring in the next component. Let's go to assemble, and this is going to be the yoke female. Hit open. And if you like, you could get it close in proximity, though you don't have to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and align this hole here to the red hole. And now 
I'm going to go ahead and select this red face to, and I'm going to rotate around and see through there and select the inside of the leg of the yoke and that went coincident and again under placement now look at that now allow assumptions is turned off which is good okay so we're still here now here's the thing if you do turn on placement now when you want to add additional constraints like for example we want this bottom surface of this plunger to align itself parallel to this surface on the bracket so what we could do is you could hit new constraint hit the little arrow right up here and now you could add another constraint this time select this face here on the underside of that plunger to this face right here now it tried to go with coincident and it didn't do anything so coincident is not the option we're looking for here we actually want to go with parallel and and it, if I recall correctly, oh, darn it. Okay, so here we're back. Um, I had a little issue there, but basically, if you can't get to this to where you can see it, look for this little blue ring and rotate that up a little bit. Let's try that again. So I'm going to go to placement and new constraint and instead of automatic I'm gonna go with parallel from the very start select the bottom face of the plunger and select this little green face right here and it should align itself and hit the apply what I would recommend doing if uh, because I, you could see that I had a little issue and I had to pause there I would actually end up maybe um, if you can't get back to that maybe delete the part and reinsert it and just restart those steps. My apologies for that. Go ahead and hit the green check mark. And let's take a look at what we just done here. If we go to drag component, we should be able to click up here and rotate it and all the components move together. You can middle click two times to end that. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put in the pins. So go to assemble. And let's drop the red pin in first. So click on the red pin, open that up. And what we're going to do is select the length of the shaft to the red hole. And then this end face of this pin We could try a tangent, but uh, I'm uh, instead I'm going to go ahead and align it to this red face right here and then we'll set it to a distance and we could actually pull the pin out just a little bit or else just double click and type in 0.06 right here for the distance offset hit the green check okay now I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the blue pins and there's two of the blue pins so assemble and find the blue pin open we'll get that little closer in proximity to where it needs to be mated and now we could go ahead and select the length of the blue pin right there and then the blue hole and now we could select this end face to this blue and flat face of the spider hinge and we could set that just like we did last time 0.06 and hit apply and finally the last one we could see it from the back here let's go and assemble another pin find another blue pin and get that up there you could even rotate it a little bit if you like select the length of the pin to the blue hole and then this end face to that blue face and set that to 0.06 again and hit apply all right so now that we have those components in place let's go ahead and put the handle on now the handle is actually a sub assembly so we could go to assemble 
and find the handle subassembly. And see, it looks like a little yellow L, and there's our handle. Open that up and drag it way up there. And what we're going to do, we'll first mate this cylindrical face right here to the pink surface of the yoke mail. Now go ahead and select this surface right here. Uh, actually, hold Control and deselect that. Uh, that's not the surface we want just yet. We actually want this little yellow flat surface right here to align first. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult to see this. Select this little face right there. And then select this yellow flat face right here. Now be careful, there's a radius yellow face. You don't want that one. You want this one right here. So select it, and that should be coincident. And now finally we could go ahead and select this face to this face. And set the distance to 0 0.005. And we should see there's a small little distance gap between those two. Hit apply. Okay, let's test this out and see how it works. Go to drag component, click on the handle, and as you rotate, everything should move together. And that's dynamic assembly motion, which is some, somewhat, it doesn't account for friction or inertia or anything like that, but uh, that would be more of a kinematics and dynamics package you would require for that. But this gets you an idea of how it's going to interact. How it will interact, I should say. Okay, now there are a couple little yellow holes here. If you want to drop in some additional parts, this is optional. Uh, it's just good practice. You could go over here and you'll find the fastener and open up the fastener and get it over there and rotate it so that it looks like it's going to go in one of the holes. Oops. Okay, as you rotate it, you can see. It goes out of the screen pretty easily. Um, we actually want the length selected of the fastener to the yellow hole. And let's see where it went. Oh, it's over here. So drag it close. You could actually drag it right in. Or else you could go ahead and just do this right away. Select this flat face to this face. And coincidence is the option you want. Remember, if it's a distance, you could set it to coincident right here. And you can just go through and add those additional holes there if you like. Uh, it's optional. It's just good practice. Okay, and that concludes this exercise 5. However, uh, we do have the Lab 5B, which is the assembly project. And that incorporates using your Lab 4 part along with the other parts in it. So you could assemble that if you like. Um, I am not going to go through that at this time as I don't have the files ready.